Hi everyone, welcome to uh, 360 iDev. My name is Evan Stone, and uh, I will be speaking on the topic today, launching your app the Swift UI way today. Uh, but first, just a, a little intro about who I am uh, is just a, a very, very quick bio. Uh, I used to be a Windows developer once upon a time and uh, did some web development too, you know, ASP.NET, that kind of thing. Um, also, but then in uh, 2001, I uh, got the opportunity to start developing for iOS uh, full-time. I had been dabbling for a couple years before that. Of course, started off with Ob Objective-C and then moved to Swift uh, in 2014. But enough of that. What you really want to hear is the, the topic of, uh, for today. Uh, but first, I want to clarify a misnomer, which is that the, the title that I originally chose for the talk is launching your app the Swift UI way. And, and it's still, that's still the title. Um, but I just was thinking about it. I was, I was working on it and pre preparing for this. And really the topic is a bit broader and really it should be app life cycle, so the Swift UI way. And uh, so let's, let's do a little bit of time travel here, time for a little history. Um, once upon a time in the beginning, we had the UI kit way of launching and managing our app lifecycle. Uh, if we go back, I'm, we're just going back to Xcode 10 here. We're not going to go back too far. Um, but this, is, this seems to be the most relevant point to, to start off with. Here in Xcode 10, I'm using a, a Xcode 10.3 as an example, um, we really only had a UI kit app to work with, didn't we? Swift UI hadn't been released yet. Now, if you notice here, a couple things. First of all, notice that in our app delegate, we have this this annotation here, at sign UI application main. So at UI application main th is the uh, the sort of the bootstrapping, the bootloading code that, that gets your app running and having that there takes care of that for us. Remember that because that's very important later on. Also, we notice here in our app delegate, this is gonna be very, very common, very familiar to most of us. We have the did finish launching with options, we have, uh, and then we have our lifecycle events that happen here with uh, resign active, did enter background, will enter foreground, did become active, and will terminate these kinds of uh, functions that, uh, that the app goes through, lifecycle events. But then we had a transition year, didn't we? Uh, where we had this mix of UI kit and Swift UI, and of course that was with Xcode 11. So Xcode 11 brought us the, the, the Swift UI arrived that year, in the same year as Xcode 11. We'll notice here the, uh, the options when we're creating a project that we have these two dropdowns, Swift and Swift UI for the user interface and, and then the, the language uh, for the top one. And so keep, any, keep your eye on this section because it's very interesting to see how this changes uh, down through the, uh, the versions of Xcode. So if we select these options here, Notice what happens. We end up with an app delegate and a scene delegate. This is a Swift UI application, but now we have app delegate and scene delegate. Now in our app delegate, we see the, our very familiar did finish launching with options event here. And then notice also, now we have this new section down below. And we're, we're not gonna focus too much on that, but then it, the question comes up, where did all that other stuff go? turns out it is in the scene delegate. And so inside the scene delegate, now we have things like did become active, did resign active, as, as we see in the, the bottom. Uh, and then moving on to the second part of this, we see the uh, did become active, did resign active, enter foreground and enter background. These are the life cycle events that are now being handled, or at least at this point, being handled by the scene delegate. So this concept of app and scene is something that we'll, we'll see as, as we continue to, to progress through this. Now the present, the Swift UI way. And this is of course with Xcode 12. Now Xcode 12, this is what most of us are currently using right now. And we see here that if we uh, create a, a, a new application, notice that we, now we have three options. This is what we have right now. Uh, you can choose the interface to be Swift UI. Notice that interface and language have switched 
locations, so interfaces on top now, Swift UI, then this lifecycle UI kit app delegate, and then Swift for the language. So if we select that, this is what we get. This is the UI kit app uh, lifecycle version. Again, we get the app delegate and the scene delegate. And it, this is virtually uh, the same as what we saw for Xcode 11. So it still has these lifecycle events of become active, resign active, enter foreground, background, and so forth. And so it's then if we back up a smidge and create a new application, this time we'll do it for SwiftUI uh, app lifecycle. Notice we've selected the, the middle one is different now for SwiftUI app. So if we do that, watch what happens. We create a new application and boom, everything disappears. So where did it go? Where did everything go again? Well, now let's progress into the future. Uh, this is the, the Swift UI way again, but this time we're going to talk about our new friend, Xcode 13. And the reason we're just jumping to Xcode 13 is because well, most of us are going to be switching to it very soon here, probably. Uh, also, uh, the structure between 12 and 13 is is basically identical. It's the same thing. Notice, though, that this has changed again. So this is what we get in the for the options for a new project in Xcode 13. We see we have interface, Swift UI, language, Swift. And if we choose these, then this is what we end up with. It's basically the same as what was in Xcode 12. So uh, here, uh, this, is, this was generated by Xcode 13 uh, beta 5. And we see here that uh, it's, it's very compact, isn't it? We didn't talk too much when we were looking at it at, at Xcode 12. But notice here that this basically defines a full Swift UI app. And uh, as Apple was very, very excited to say that uh, if you made the title of your project uh, short enough, then uh, this thing would fit into 140 characters. I was able to do that uh, just, as, just to test that out. And sure enough, uh, it did. Um, so, but in this particular case, notice, that, notice how small it is. And we have this at main item here. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then we're going to dive a little deeper into the lifecycle events that are seem to be missing from Xcode 13. OK, so let's do a little demo and see how this works. OK, so here we are in Xcode 13. And uh, we'll see in this, uh, we've, cre we've created this very basic Swift UI app. And you'll notice here is our at main attribute here. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is um, this is now taking the place of the at UI application main, or if you're doing Mac OS, uh, at NS application main. Um, so what it, it what it does is it basically instructs the compiler to uh, to insert the bootloading code for your app, and so it's very important for us uh, to to have this in here. Uh, it's a it's a convenience, and if you want more information on it, you can go to uh, the the Swift Ev Evolution um, uh, documentation or the the forums and read up on the SE zero two eight one. Uh, proposal there, and it, it was accepted, and and we see the results of it now. But it's a really good explanation if you have any uh, interest in reading about that. Okay, so moving on. Actually, uh, what we want to do here is uh, we want to see how to uh, trap these lifecycle events like we used to in the uh, app delegate way of doing things in UI Kit. Turns out we can do it, and so what we'll do is uh, we will switch over to our content view. And uh, what's really, really nice is that there is an environment variable that we can now hook into, and it's called scene phase. So let's uh, just a little uh, have a little snippet here that uh, sets that up for us. So we have this environment variable scene phase. And uh, once we do this, then we can use the on change event, and we can add this to our text view here. So what I'll do is I'll do uh, the on change here. And so now we have this handler for on change. 
and we see that we're using the scene phase variable that we created above. And in the closure, it's passing this new phase. And if we uh, take a look here and see what this is, it is a scene phase. So now we have this, uh, this scene phase variable, uh, which we're calling new phase, and we can then trap on the state of that particular variable uh, that's that's passed into our closure to see what state the app is in and we have three options currently we have active inactive and background as you'll see here there's active active inactive and background and I added this because for two reasons I wanted to use a switch instead of uh, an if so uh, it's up to you. A switch to me felt easier. And then uh, I just added the, the unknown default for future proofing. Um, so what we'll do here is uh, we'll just go ahead and trap the, these events as they happen. And we'll just print out the state of uh, which, one, which one is happening. So let's see how this happens. Let's go ahead and build and launch the app. And you'll see in our console down below, our output down below, you'll see how this uh, how this works. Okay, so here we are with uh, the the app has launched, and now we see the app is active. So the that particular case is being trapped. Now watch what happens if we go over to the simulator, and uh, we uh, let's background let's or let's just uh, press the home button. Okay, and notice that when we did that the app went inactive and then it went into the background. And then if we tap on it again, bring it back, lo and behold, it becomes, uh, it goes inactive and then active again. So uh, another thing that's really cool here is uh, if we actually just kind of slide up from the bottom, notice what happened to our app as we did that. It went to inactive state or inactive phase, we'll just call it phase. Uh, so that scene phase uh, that it went into, uh, it didn't go to background. Now, if we if we hit the home button, uh, let's see, oh, actually, it, uh, I'll hit it again. And then again, it goes to the inactive and then background scene phase. So that is our app lifecycle, how we can handle that right within a Swift UI view. So the next question that uh, usually comes up is, well, what about all of that other stuff that I used to do in my app delegate? Uh, what about uh, initializing SDKs and those kinds of things? Well, there's basically two options that you can have. I've seen one option that you can do is in your app, you can actually, uh, you could put it in your init here, okay? Uh, so you could go ahead and, and use that to use your init to initialize your uh, uh, any any kind of app setup that you need to do. That's fine. That's good. But um, th that so that's that's one solution. But then there's another question too that comes up, which is, well, what about all that other stuff that App Delegate used to give me? Um, can I can I use that? Well, the answer to that is is yes, you can. So uh, there's a something that is has been provided to us that is uh, called the uh, UI application delegate adapter. So this is something that we can use to uh, create an an app delegate that we can then hook into in our Swift UI app. Let's see how that's that how that's done here. So the first thing that we do is, uh, and I have a snippet created for this. I am going to call it, uh, let me bring that up. It's the app delegate. And uh, so what we do, the first thing you do is you create a class called app delegate. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily called that. You can call it whatever it is, whatever you want, but it makes sense to call it that. Um, and it is a subclass of NS objects and it implements the UI application delegate protocol. And so we have, our own app, app delegate again. And we see here, uh, I've, I'm currently uh, implementing the did finish launching with options uh, method, handling that event as it, as it comes and we'll see how that works. Okay, so after we've created that class, the this app delegate, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we are going to use the UI application delegate ad uh, adapter property wrapper uh, to instruct SwiftUI 
to use our the app delegate that we've created. And so it's actually pretty easy to do that. Again, I have a snippet created, but uh, so here's the property wrapper and uh, we tell it to use app delegate and uh, that's it. And we have this, this variable. And um, so once we've done that, um, watch what happens. This is all we need to do. And now I will launch the app again. And now you see we are handling did finish launching with options. Uh, so uh, so that's a, it makes it fairly easy. And here's the other great part about this, which is that if you if, remember how we said that there were other parts of the uh, app delegate that were kind of missing from those just the basic three states that we could handle uh, in our content view. Well, uh, notice here if I just start off with application. So it, we have a lot more. Uh, options that we can can hook into now. It's it's basically everything that we can uh, can use in UI application delegate. So it's kind of the same thing that we had before. If you need it, now what's nice about it feels like the uh, the the Swift UI model that we looked at over here in content model. It's to me it feels simpler, and it wouldn't surprise me if we end up having something that extends this a little more to make it so that we can do this kind of thing with the app delegate um, going forward. I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens in, at, uh, in uh, WWDC next year. Maybe there will be some more enhancements to all of this. Uh, but if not, for the most part, these particular states, active and active in background, and being able to set up our app uh, in the init, um, of our, of our application pretty much gives us, I think pretty much everything that you'd need. But if you do need more, then this is the, the way to do it. Okay, so that was a demonstration of the Swift UI app lifecycle. And uh, then we also saw how to use the, the app delegate and the adapter that is provided for us. Uh, so I hope you find that, that useful. Uh, I also have created this this chart that is going to be included in the in the slides, and it just kind of goes through that history that we talked about uh, the WWDC uh, year that the particular version of Xcode came out and iOS, and then also the UI framework, and then the lifecycle type that is being used for that. It's more of just an informational historical thing. And uh, you can see how the progression goes from app delegate to app and scene delegates, and now to the app and scene protocols that we use in Swift UI. So uh, it's uh, just a little bit of informational stuff there. Hope you, hopefully you find it useful. And then the question uh, comes up too, which should I use? Well, I think we kind of touched on it when we were going through the, uh, the, the demo, but uh, I, it seems to me like a, a reasonable approach would be to go with the, uh, the Swift UI way first of, of using the, the scene phases, um, using the init for your app, using, trying out those kinds of methods first and see how far you can get with those. And then if it turns out you need more, then you can start using the, uh, the app delegate adapter. So uh, that seems like a reasonable approach to use. Another thing too, is that if you already have a lot of app delegate code in existence, then it would be probably a good idea to, to just go ahead and continue to use that. And uh, which you can use, you can do it with the, with the adapter. So, uh, so it's, it's up to you. And again, as usual, the answer is it depends. So uh, hopefully it, either of those solutions will work for you. I have a couple of acknowledgements. I just wanted to uh, mention these. These are just four of the sources that I wanted to call out. Uh, technically, maybe it's actually five. Um, but um, the uh, Peter Frieza, uh, his um, ultimate guide to the Swift UI 2 application lifecycle was a great article, as well as these two articles on managing the app and uh, scenes in Swift UI. Uh, it's on the Swift with uh, Majid. Um, uh, site. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, John Sundell has uh, has a good article on how Swift UI can be used to build 
uh, an entire iOS app, and he talks about that life cycle thing. And then, of course, Paul Hudson. Paul Hudson always has uh, awesome resources for us to use. And uh, that, that last part on how to add an app del delegate to SwiftUI was uh, particularly useful. So all of this is good information, and uh, ho hopefully you'll, you'll find it useful. And uh, then where to find me? Um, I am uh, on Twitter as Evan K. Stone and also as iOS DevBrick. And uh, my blog and consulting uh, company and website is interactivelogic.net. Uh, the, the company is Interactive Logic. That's the company I use for consulting. And uh, the site is more of a blog right now, but uh, hopefully it'll become more businessy as time, time uh, progresses. Uh, as soon as I get time to work on it. Uh, then I have the iOS Dev Break podcast. Hopefully you are aware of it and have heard it. Uh, it has been kind of up and down, especially in the last year or so, but I'm hoping to pick it back up and very soon here. Uh, Transformation is a project I'm working on on the uh, on the side when I have have some time, and uh, also for uh, the majority of the the time that I'm working on iOS, it's usually on the Bleacher Report Sports app. And uh, you can find that at uh, bleachreport.com, the website, and you can also find the app in the App Store. So that is it for me. Thank you so much, and I, I hope you found this useful in uh, uh, launching your app the, the Swift UI way. Thank you.